طيب there are there are there are two ways or there are generally when people talk about what we were talk about we'll talk about um, applying for training there are usually not all types of training bear in mind this is more focused on psychiatry but we'll try and generalize um, um, uh, things as much as possible in most trainings there are two points of entry the first point is what we call core psychi core core training um, or basic training which uh, junior doctors can enter basically after finishing their foundation training. And um, in psychiatry, for example, there is a second entry point um, after three years where people can apply only for higher training. So people who have been practicing for quite some time um, can actually still join for a higher, um, on a higher level if, if they wish, rather than going through the whole training. I believe this applies as well to surgery certain types of surgery. I think there are surgeries, or Kasha, you can correct me, or Mahmoud, um, if there are certain surgeries that you have to go, what they call a go through, you have to start from the beginning in order to reach to them, uh, in order to finish training. Am, am I right in that sense? That's right. So you've got, uh, you've got either run through ST1 or CT1 uh, or run through ST2 or ST3, depending on the, on the speciality. So you can, you can go uh, slightly further in the training. It used to be ST3, um, entrance, but now it's, it's becoming ST2, ST2. Oh, okay. Okay, fair enough. Um, that's my understanding. But in, for that sake, psychiatry, for example, is a split. So there are two different points of entry, which means there are two different requirements for each point. This is a, something that we will not discuss now, but we'll discuss in the next session. Um, to apply for training, we will talk about later on in, in the next session about the CREST, um, and the eligibility and the exams, eligibility criteria in the assessment process. I don't think we need to cover this now. So a lot of people talk about training. They, they are so, um, they want to go for training and this is what they think about. Training is great in lots of, uh, in, in, in lots of aspects. It entails that you have supervision, regular supervision that you have to attend. Um, it entails that you keep up to date with what is called a portfolio. So you keep, uh, um, is done evidencing the things that you have done in training and it entails that um, you have to follow a particular curriculum or you have to take certain competencies in that sense training in the uk is very similar i mean the only example i can think of is very similar to um having a residency program in the university uh, you're closely monitored there are lots of supervisors um and you are always expected, you're always expected to achieve certain things in comparison to if in, in, in Egypt is the example, if you work in the Ministry of Health or for Saha, you, you, you roam around. If you want to learn something, you learn it. If you don't want to, um, you're completely free. For training in that sense is, is an advantage. Um, it entails an inter that you have on calls and it entails uh, usually a change in placements. You keep moving hospitals, and you really don't have much of a say in this. Basically, uh, within the region. quite disruptive. It's very straightforward. You start from the beginning. You know when it will end. You know the period. Uh, you're well supported. You end up with a certificate, uh, what they call um, CCT, Certificate of Completion of Training. And you can use this certificate in the Antachtal Pahitatania in, in other places. So you can practice in Canada, you can practice in the Gulf, you can practice in Australia. This certificate is approved over there and you can become a um, substantive consultant. What are the disadvantages? If you are quite senior and high up in the speciality, uh, you can have different routes and you can evidence your expertise um, uh, in different ways, you don't have to go through training. You don't have to have a supervisor. You don't have to um, do on calls again. The pay in training is relatively less than if you're doing um, what they call a staff grade, if you're working for the hospital. And if you're working for the hospital directly, you can generally negotiate uh, sometimes a pay or negotiate not to have on calls. calls uh, This is not the case always in, in training. Um, and training can be disruptive. You can work in a certain job as a specialty doctor or a registrar, and you stay in this hospital for five, six, seven, ten years if you prefer. Um, while in training, you will probably, you will actually have to move uh, between places. 
So this is a very, very brief overview of what training entails. Um, there is obviously lots of details between different specialities, which we'll talk about later. The other uh, alternative is something that is called Medical Training Initiative, or MTIs. MTIs <clears throat> started a few years ago, as far as I understand. The aim was, uh, when they had efficiency in certain places, that they would fill the spots in Homa Yemlul Abakindayan uh, with people from the overseas, overseas doctors who are seeking to have a short period of training um, in the UK. Uh, it is up to two years. It is not more than that, usually one to two years. Um, um, it is not really very well formalized like training. So different deaneries, different areas and different trusts can offer it, but not everyone does offer it. And not every place knows what an MTI is exactly. Uh, it has a disadvantage. You come in a tier five visa, which is a student visa. Um, in comparison to if you come in training, you come in a tier two visa, which is a work visa. A work visa in this sense means that after five years, you have the right for indefinite leave to remain. Under a, under a tier five visa, under a student visa, uh, you're not eligible for that. It does not count up to uh, indefinite leave to remain. Um, you get a temporary registration of the GMC. The advantage is that you don't need to do a PLAB exam. You don't need to finish your Royal College exams. Um, so if you usually, if you just did one, royal, one of the Royal College exams, you can go for uh, MTI. It's a good way to have a, test, a taster of things. It's a good way if you want to um, move quickly. Uh, most of the people who do MTI decide to, uh, with the ones I have met at least, decide to stay um, and then they switch into finding a job. And it's a good way to introduce yourself um, to the training. Uh, this year, there is far, far less MTI uh, places because it's based on filling the training spaces. And this year, um, uh, there has been a lot of training spaces filled already. Uh, this is the pathway to it. We'll share the slides, and this is some information about it.